Are you struggling to find the research gap? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what a research gap is and more importantly, how to find it real quick. So let's dive into it. So first of all, before I tell you how to find a research gap, let's just very briefly, 30 seconds up to a minute, talk about what a research gap is. Because without your understanding what a research gap is, you won't be able to find one, right? So what is a research gap? Well, there are four types of research gap. The first one is lack of research, you know? And this can be to do with like a lack of studies in a particular country and a particular group of people, you know, and an insufficient number of studies, right? Or lack of studies using a particular methodology, right? So that's one, lack of studies. Number two, um, it is limitations or problems with previous studies. So all studies have limitations and when you're reading the literature, you just want to identify those limitations, right? Um, number three, um, um, is lack of knowledge, right? What do I mean by that? Well, maybe there are a lot of studies on a specific topic, but the results are somewhat contradictory and we don't know, there is a lack of knowledge, we don't know, you know, whether a particular medical treatment actually works or not, right? So that's type three. And, you know, the, the fourth um, type is some sort of like real world problems, right? So like, you know, imagine that there is this like medical um, technique that everybody is using and has been described in previous papers, but, but this technique has clear real world problems, you know? And this can also form part of your research gap. So this is what a research gap actually is, right? Now, why do you need a research gap? You might be asking yourself, well, you need a research gap in order to have a research question, right? You can't have a research question or an aim or an objective or a hypothesis or whatever if you don't have a research gap. So you have to identify it first and then have a question. Or if you already have a question and you don't know why you have this question, then now you need to find a research gap that will match your research question, right? So that's what a research gap is and why you need one. And now we're gonna dive into how to actually find your research gap real quick. But before we do that, if you're new here and you might be wondering, who am I? My name is Marek Tichkovek and I run Academic English Now, where I help PhD students and researchers regularly publish research papers in top journals in your field. And if you're enjoying this video, then hit that like and that subscribe and bell button so that you don't miss future videos. So there will be five steps to finding the research gap and there will also be a bonus tip. So definitely stick around to this video because I'm gonna give you a real pro tip that can really boost the quality of your research gap and especially if you want to publish in higher impact journals, that bonus tip will be really useful. So stick around until the end. Now, the first thing that of course you have to do is you've got to find relevant research papers and then read them and so on. But first, finding the research papers is really, really important. And the first place where a lot of you might go wrong is that you try you find too many papers and you have too much to read. Really, if you're just looking for the research gap, what you want to do is just look at the most recent papers, five years maximum, but maybe even like the last two or three years, right? You don't want more than that. Because if you look at papers from like the last 10 years, you know, those papers that were published 10 years ago, their, their problems and the limitations, they've already been solved, most likely, right? But if you're looking at the newest papers, then it's very likely that some of the problems with those papers or some of the topics, you know, they have not been fully answered yet because they're very recent. So definitely just limit your search to the most recent papers. And if you want more information about how to search for papers, I've got another video here where I walk you through the entire strategy. So that's the first thing, right? Searching the most recent literature. Now, what, what, when you found it, like, what do you do with all those papers and how do you read them to find the research gap quickly? Now, that's step number two. And the biggest problem here that I found a lot of you are facing is that you try to read everything. Right? And it does take a lot of time, it's frustrating, and then you've got all these ideas kind of in your mind going like this and you don't really know what you're looking for. So what you want to be doing when you're reading the research paper is just looking at specific parts of the paper that can help you to identify the research gap. What are those specific parts of the paper? Well, number one, in the introduction, the researchers will have identified a research gap themselves that they are answering. But if you're reading a paper from, you know, this year, 
then it's likely that this research gap that was identified in that paper was only answered partially. And it can give you, even if it was answered fully, it can give you good ideas for other potential research gaps, right? So that's the first thing that you want to do, like look at the research gaps. Now, the second thing that you want to look at is the limitations of the paper, right? So of course you can read it in a lot of detail yourself, and maybe you should, but if you're lacking time and you want to do it fast, then just go to the discussion or the conclusion section of the paper and then look at the limitations section, right? Which is very quickly search the paper you know and type in limitations and then you will find limitations right and then you know just write down the limitations of that particular study because you can answer those limitations in your own study so the limitations are one type of a research gap remember right another great place to look for the research gap is suggestions for future studies right so usually you know the researchers themselves will tell you what should be done next so if you're reading a paper from this year and the paper says that you know one of the limitations of this study is the small sample size therefore it is recommended that future studies attempt to you know uh, study a larger pool of people right well then clearly this is what you should you should probably do right or the researchers might say you know that despite this study and its results you know it is still not clear what the effect of x y and z is well then clearly you might want to study the effect of that because you know there is a research gap and the researchers themselves in their own paper are telling you that they're telling you what to do so you don't have to reinvent the wheel i think a lot of us like in research just kind of think like we have to come up with all these new ideas we have to be super creative Often you don't, you just need to look at the most recent papers and see what other people have done and see what they suggest you should do and just follow that suggestion, right? And you'll find the research gap. So this is how you read the papers to find the research gap. Now let's go to step number three. Now step number three is to organize all these, uh, all that reading that you're doing into a meaningful table or Excel sheet that will help you to distill the research gap right and that's also a, a place where a lot of you might get it wrong because you're reading all these papers and you're taking notes but you don't have one centralized place where all these key notes from those papers are put so that you can start seeing patterns so what i'd recommend is like a simple excel sheet just kind of like this where you know you can have different tabs and one tab can be for example for limitations of studies one tab can be for like lack of research one tab can be for like um, lack of knowledge or a controversy in your field where you have like contradicting results another tab can be for like real world problems right and then basically as you're reading the papers um, following the strategies that I've just described you can just like put the name of the paper and like the main for example limitation of that paper into the correct tab in Excel you know and what you want to do is like is do that for like the next 10 15 papers and then start seeing patterns right so um, the following step and um, step four once you have all this is to start seeing patterns if you've done all the previous steps correctly the, the research gap should be jumping out at you like you will start really seeing patterns if you don't if you're not seeing any there can be two reasons you've either messed up the previous steps or um, you haven't read enough and there aren't any patterns yet right so what you're basically looking for is like you know for several studies to be telling you that you know for example more quantitative studies are needed or maybe like several studies have identified that there is this practical problem with this you know medical treatment you know and we need to solve this problem or maybe like a couple of studies you know or maybe like a lot of studies have been conducted just in Europe and there seems to be like just one or two studies conducted in Asia so maybe we should look at this issue in Asia right if you see what I mean so like once you have it all organized in an Excel sheet like it's much easier to start seeing those patterns and start kind of identifying what the research gap is right so that's um, that's step number four now step number five is to actually um, write a paragraph you know where you express your research gap now 
you know, if you're writing a PhD thesis, you might need more than one paragraph. Maybe you only need like two, three or four paragraphs. The reason being is that you have more than one aim and more than one objective, right? But typically, you know, for like one main aim or one main research question, you probably want like one paragraph where you clearly state the research gap, right? And this should be very simple. Like, so it, it will usually start with something like, you know, um, although several studies on X, Y, and Z have been conducted, um, many of those studies, and then you express the research gap, like many of those studies are based in Europe. And very few studies have been conducted in Asia. Moreover, and then you know you expand on this and you give an example, right? And then this leads you to your research aim. And I told you at the beginning that there would be a bonus tip. So thanks around for sticking around until here with me and my bonus tip that will really help you, I think, to make your research gap very strong is to combine various types of research gap into one paragraph to further strengthen the justification for your paper. Because one of the biggest reasons why your paper might be rejected is that the reviewers don't see any novelty in your paper. But if you're able to provide like more than one research gap, for example, you point out that there is a lack of research on a specific topic, you also point out that there is some sort of lack of understanding um, on that particular topic. We don't know why something is happening, for example. This makes your research stronger. And maybe, thirdly, you can even add some limitations of previous studies into the mix. And you put that in a one nice paragraph of like four or five sentences, and this makes your research gap and your research much stronger. So combine those different research gaps into one. Now, if you'd like to work with me more closely and you're determined to publish three or more research papers in the next 12 months, then let's definitely talk. Schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation. Um, we're going to meet online and identify what is stopping you, what your challenges are, what you want to achieve, and then outline a personalized strategy that will help you to achieve your goals. And the link to book that one-to-one -one consultation is right below this video.